Hey everyone, this is Shashank at AWS. In this video, I'll introduce TorchServe, which is an open source model serving library for PyTorch, jointly developed by AWS and Facebook. We'll take a quick look at what it is, how it works, what are its key capabilities, and how you can get started with it quickly. TorchServe is open source, so head over to github.com slash PyTorch slash serve and follow the install instructions to install TorchServe. Once you've installed it, you can quickly start up a server by running TorchServe start. And once the server is running, you'll get access to two sets of APIs. The inference API, which lets you query for the health of the system, but also submit inference requests. And the management API, which lets you register models, unregister models, version your models, increase or decrease the number of workers per models, and so on. Both these services are listening at port 8080 and 8081 respectively, but these are the defaults and you can optionally change them to any other port that you prefer. To deploy models, Torso supports models written in both eager mode as well as Torch script. You can use the Torch model archiver utility, which ships as part of TorchServe, to take not just your model checkpoint, but also the model definitions and the state dictionary and package all of them into a single archive file called marfile, which you can then optionally also redistribute. When you're ready to deploy models in the model store, simply use a management API to register specific models that you want hosted. And by default, TorchServe will switch on logging and metrics. These are both fully customizable, which means you can make it as verbose as you need or make it provide as little information as you need. Once the models are hosted, you can have external client applications such as web applications, mobile applications, or other web services invoke the inference API for prediction requests. TorchServe natively doesn't provide authentication, but you can leverage these capabilities offered by Amazon EKS, Amazon ECS, Amazon SageMaker, or a self-managed and hosted Kubernetes cluster for additional security. Now let's take a look at an example showing these steps in action. I'm running this example on an Amazon EC2 instance, but you may very well run this on your laptop or desktop. Simply head over to github.com slash pytorch serve and follow the instructions for your platform. Once you've installed uh, TorchServe, you can verify that it's installed by running help and you'll see that there's some helpful information about uh, using TorchServe. Starting a server is easy. As I mentioned, you simply say TorchServe start and you can provide additional configuration parameters. In this case, I'm providing only one, which is model store. And this is just instructing TorchServe where to find models. And now you can see on the left from the log that TorchServe is now running. In order to make requests to this server, I will open up another terminal. There are different ways to do this. I'm using Tmux, which I encourage. Uh, we'll now submit requests to TorchServe management API and inference API and uh, register models and run inference and so on. So to start, let me go ahead and download a model and I'm downloading a DenseNet 161 model from the official uh, PyTorch repository. And now that this model is downloaded, you can see here on my terminal that I have this new uh, DenseNet model weights. Next step uh, in deploying this model is to create a model archive file, MAR file. And to do that, we'll use the Torch model archiver utility. There are a couple of different options here. The first thing is to specify a model name. I say DenseNet 161, you may very well call it something else. You can version your models. So I specify version 1.0. I specify where my model definition is then specify where the weight files are, which I just downloaded. And then I'll specify uh, index to name JSON file, which maps the prediction outputs to categories or classes. And finally, the most interesting thing is the handler. Notice I'm not providing any custom handlers. I'm just specifying that I should use the image classifier handler, which takes care of initialization, pre-processing, post-processing, so you don't have to manage uh, any of those things. And Torso provides default handlers for image classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, te and text classification. So if you're deploying any of these models, you just provide a name and you're ready to go. Now that the archive has been generated, you can see that you have a new file here called densenet161.mar. So this is the model archive file that will move to the model directory 
model store directory so that dot serve can find it. Densenet 161.mar. Okay, now that the model is in the model store directory, we can now register this model with totserve so it can start serving requests and registering is just as easy. We use the management API and say models equal to densenet161.mar. This is the file that's in the model store directory and you'll see status that the model was successfully registered. You can also take a look at all the models that are currently registered by using the management API again. And the way to use this is say, CURL 8081 slash models, and you'll see that there is one model that's been registered. You can further get additional information about this specific model by appending densenet 161 to slash model slash densenet 161. And you'll see now, that I have additional information about this model, the name of the model, the version, and so on and so forth. You'll see that currently it says the minimum workers and maximum workers are zero, which means there are no workers assigned, no CPU threads assigned to serve requests. And you can change that by specifying the minimum number of workers. And we'll do that here by invoking this particular uh, request. I'm saying, uh, localhost 8081 models uh, densenet 161 I say minimum workers let me say minimum workers 2 there you go dense densenet 161 uh, minimum workers equal to two. okay there I got that right now that we've requested for minimum workers too, I can go back and query the specific uh, model details. And I'll now see that I have minimum workers too when I invoke the uh, management API for more information about my specific model. Okay, so now that it has workers assigned to it, I can now make prediction requests. And to do that, I can go ahead and first download an image and I'm going to download the image of a kitten and you'll see now that I have a kitten.jpg on my terminal here. Now I can submit uh, inference requests and I can do that using the inference API at 8080. So this is what I'm doing. I'm calling the localhost inference API predictions prediction slash dense net 161 and kitten jpeg and you see that the model thinks it's primarily uh, tiger cat or tabby cat and right below on the terminal logs you'll see that uh, you'll see dense net 161 here and log information about the inference request uh, being made great so now we have one model that's hosted how do you host multiple models Following the same process, I can uh, now host uh, a faster RCNN model. Let me go ahead and download this particular model, just like we did in the past. Uh, I'll go download this model, create a model archive file, which is the same process as before. And notice now, instead of uh, the handler being image classification, the handler is now an object detector handle which means again, I don't have to write initializers, preprocessors, postprocessors, everything else is taken care of. I go generate this uh, model archive file. Again, same process like before, this new model.mar file is available to me now, as you can see here, fastrcnn.mar. Next, I'm gonna move this model past our cnn.mar to the model store. Now this model is available uh, to be hosted and I can register this model. Same process as before. I call the management API and you'll see that the model was successfully registered. I simply had to specify the name of the model and it's now successfully, successfully been registered. Same as before, in order to make this uh, model uh, work I need to assign workers minimum workers I specify minimum workers equal to two and I can again confirm that by using the management API 
if I scroll up, I can see that I now have minimum workers too because that is what I requested. You can request more workers. If you have high traffic for a specific model, you can scale up or scale down just as easily with a simple API call. And finally, now that it's been registered, I can query the model, uh, make inference requests just like before. And uh, you can, uh, let's take a look at all the model that's been registered. So I run a management API slash models and you see that I have two models now registered. And you can query, add models, delete models, you can version models, uh, everything is uh, very simple. So once you've uh, done with uh, TotServe, you can go back and ask uh, TotServe to, to stop and the server is stopped and then you're all set.